Hi and welcome to part three of my song breakdown for the tune Cotton Crop Blues by James Cotton in the key of D with Pat Hare on the electric guitar. And in this third and final part of the lesson, we're going to take a look at the solo, which I'm going to try to teach you note for note. And then we'll look at the end tag, which is kind of cool, and be done with it. Now the solo, he plays the introduction. There's two verses behind which he plays fills and all kinds of cool chords and things. And then we get to the solo. And the solo is just absolutely vicious. And what I'm going to do here is play the original recording and then show you what he's playing. I don't do this too often because I'm kind of shy about copyright people coming after me on YouTube, which they have done before. So let's start out. The solo starts at 136 on the original recording. <laughs> first part is pretty simple, but it sounds awesome. And what he's doing is playing that same diminished chord that he played at the very beginning of the song. And I've got it tabbed out, you know, how many times he plays it and all that. But it's basically like this. And then he's going to move those fingers over. Chord, first position ninth chord shape from an E ninth, E flat ninth to a, a D ninth. And what you do is just take that same diminished chord shape and move everything over a string and then down one. So that ninth chord shape, if you don't know this one, we haven't used this one yet in this song. First finger is on the 11th fret of the 5th string. Second finger is on the 11th fret of the 3rd string. Ring finger is on the 12th fret of the 4th string. Pinky is on the 12th fret of the 2nd string. You've got this. That's a 1st position E ninth chord. Here's a 2nd position E ninth. And we've already been using that position. So he just strums it. Just moving it, walking it, down a fret. So he starts with E ninth, E flat ninth, D ninth. So played in context, that whole first lick, which he basically plays twice. Again. And then to kick into the four, it sounds to me like he's sliding into the second position, ninth chord G from the D. You have to listen to the recording to get the, the timing and the sound of it. But the only rule here, you can't just slide. Well, you could slide from other places, but I think the slide is starting from the D, so he just winds up with the with that D ninth, and then he's going to start from this D ninth and slide into the four, which is the G nine. So one more time, real slow. Let's play that first part of the solo. single string lines. Let me play that second part of the solo. The next phrase of the solo, he's going to, let's take it from the chord slide, he's going to play a little phrase like this. And then do another chord slide. I'm trying to remember this note for note and look at the tab as I teach this, so forgive me for being a little, little scattered here. But what he does from the chord slide, he does a a double stop, which is really over the G, second position G bar chord. I've got my first finger on the 10th fret of the first string, ring finger on the 12th fret of the second string. That's a very typical electric blues double stop. He leads into it by sliding on the second string from the 11th to the 12th fret, and then picks both the first and second strings as a double stop. So the little lick, like that. Then he 
plays a single string round from the 10th fret of the 2nd string, 12 10 on the 3rd string, and then 12th fret of the 4th of the string. So the whole lick from the chord slide. Then he does a band on the 3rd string, where he kind of holds it. Bends it up and holds it. You have to listen to the recording if you want to get that exact. And then he's going to do another chord slide. He's still playing over the four. Slides again into that G9. So the whole second phrase, or the next phrase in the solo, from the chord slide. I'll play it real slow. Then, after the second chord slide, he plays a single string lick. Something like that. So let me walk through that. He slides into the G chord, G ninth chord. Then he does this familiar little lick. Remember, he's playing over the four. Something like that. I'm not sure if I got the accents of the beat and stuff right. And again, I've got it on the tab. Listen to the original recording, but those are the notes he's playing. One more time. Right there. Now the next part. Let's listen to this real quick. So he's doing something like this. Again, just playing licks within that first blues box. So that is the next lick. So he's starting from the 13th fret of the first string to the 10th fret to the 13th fret of the second string. Back to the 10th fret of the first string. Twice on the 13th fret of the first string. And then 13, 10 on the second string. So the whole lick. And he winds up on the 12th fret of the fourth string with that, with that third string bend in between. So we've done a lot of this stuff already. Check the tab. But that's pretty much what he's doing for the next lick. The next little phrase that he plays goes like this. So what he's doing, whoops, starting here, he starts to lick off on the 12th fret of the 1st string to the 10th fret. Something like that. There it is right there. So he's starting, and then he does a couple bend, double stop bend licks with the long bend. He's got his first finger. Still on the 10th fret of the 1st string, and he uses his pinky, and it sounds like ring finger. He does a couple bends. And then winds up. Getting back to the 5 chord with this quick little run. So let's break that down. After that, 13, 10 on the 2nd string. And then the bend on the 3rd string, 12th fret. And then this lick, from the 10th fret of the 3rd string, kind of bends that a little bit, holds it. And then 12, 10 on the 4th string, 12th fret of the 5th string. And he gets back into that chord. So the whole lick, like that. Let's listen to the next phrase. So he's coming into the A9 chord, and then he's going to do this little arpeggio picking thing with the A9 chord position, second position A9 chord. And then he's going to do a little run like that. So he's going to bend on the first string. It's a long bend with my first finger on the 10th fret of the first string, pinky on the 13th fret. He kind of lets it tail off, and he does a quick little 
pull-off on the 10th, 13th fret of the 2nd string to the 10th fret. Like that. So the whole lick there. Something like that. And the very last part of the solo. Let's listen to this. So he's using the double stops. Playing something like that. So the 12th fret, to the 10th fret, to the 12th fret on the 2nd and 3rd string. Then he doubles back. So it's 13, 12, 10, 13, 12, 10. Winds up on the 12th fret of the 4th string. So the whole lick, like that. That sounds to me like again, he does that quick little lick on the 10th, 11th, 12th frets of the 5th string, 10th fret of the 4th string, 12th fret of the 5th string into the 5. And it, does, it could be a A7. It doesn't sound like an A9. He doesn't usually use that at the turnaround. It sounds to me more like a 7. And then into the last verse, he throws in that little lick again. Same thing he did at the start of the first verse. So that last part of the solo, one more time real slow. choppy and I've never done this before mixing in the original recording so hopefully that helped you out but listen to the original recording of the song and you'll be able to follow and the tab I have I think tabbed out pretty much note for note or very close to that on the solo. So one last thing he does in the song and we'll come back now to time that for the end tag first. which is the very last part of the song Cotton Crop Blues. Listen to the original and then we'll work on it. <laughs> So the end tag, as I've got tabbed out here, I want to make sure I do it exactly for you. I've got it on the last page of the, whoops, I had it on the last page of the tab. Yeah, there she goes. So it's like this. One, two, three. So it's four times on the diminished chord. We've used this before at the beginning of the song and in the solo. And it sounds to me, he's getting a D shape, just briefly, and then going into that double stop. So it's four times, like that. And so it's either a D chord shape or a double stop with the first and second strings. And then this lick, it's just a typical lick that you hear a lot in electric blues. He's flattening out the double stop. We've used this before on the 12th fret of the second and third string. And the hammer on double stop where he's got his first finger on the 10th fret, second and third string, and bringing his second finger down on the third string while picking the second and third string then wrapping it up on the 12th fret of the or the 12th fret of the fourth string which is a D so that whole part like that it sounds to me like he's going twice on the D I'm sorry the E9 first position E9 we've used this one and then on the D9 and then he's doing this slide. Now the slide is from an A9, first position, down here, to the D9, which is the one where he ends the song. So the whole end tag, the way I'm hearing it, goes like this. Now you 
could do it with the ninth chord just ascending. Something like that. But I think he's doing twice on the E9. And this slide. I can't tell if he's picking. I think he's just sliding. To wrap it up. So one more time real slow, the end tag for Cotton Crop Blues. And that's how, that's how I'm hearing it. So there you have the song breakdown for January and February 2016, Cotton Crop Blues by James Cotton with Pat Hare on guitar. A lot of cool ideas there, especially using the ninth chords, mixing in the double stops, some of the single string, some of those ideas that are in there too, and some of the other things, like using that lick. A lot of good stuff in there. Again, I've tabbed it out as best I can, note for note. Let me know if you find any problems or anything, and I'll try to fix it. And if you have any questions about this lesson, let me know, and I'd be glad to help you out. I'll see you again in a couple months with another song breakdown. And thanks for watching.